I'm an idiot. Ah. Well, not a lot I can do about it now. Hello friends. This is my entry into SW Dweeb's awesome 2019 Openers Open. This is a little bit unusual for me, as usually I've completed the project before I start editing. But as I'm making this video, I still don't know whether I've managed to make something that works or not. Because the trouble is I'm going on holiday in six days, and the publishing day is while I'm away. And that would be fine normally, except I've still got a huge amount to do. And honestly, at this rate, I have no time for do-overs. So basically I'm going to have to try and edit this video as I shoot the video. Because if I leave the editing until the end, like normal, I'll never have time to edit and then upload before going away. So this is just like that TV show 24. It's all in real time. It's something like that TV show. Okay, now that said, let's start with a little story. Ooh, story time. Story time. Ooh, story, story time. time. Story Ooh. time. Once upon a time, a great YouTuber mate and fellow caster once came up with a great idea for an all-inclusive fun competition to get everyone together making something. And each person could make it in their own way, in any way they liked. And once made, they'd all publish it on YouTube on the same day, and everyone lived happily ever after. Okay, so this year, I'm assuming there'll be more years, the idea is to make a bottle opener. So I've got to make a bottle opener. I've also been wanting to try and make a sculpture for a while, but I keep putting it off. So what if I could combine making a sculpture with the bottle opener challenge? I really want to push the boat out with this one, so I get my thinking cap on. So I've had a good look at some bottle openers, and, well, how do I make this a bit different? The geometry of these openers is interesting, and the main thing they have in common is a rim or hook for grabbing the bottle lid flutes, the edge of the bottle lid, and then a part that rests on the bottle cap itself. With those two things, you can open a bottle of beer. Well, you guys know how to open a bottle of beer. Now, I want to make a bottle opener that's a bit different, so I sat around thinking for a while. Why isn't Why there a sarcasm font? font? Why don't, Why don't knees, knees bend, bend forwards? forwards? Oh my oh god, god jeez. Wait, Wait, wasn't, wasn't I supposed to be thinking about something, about something else? else? Something, Something to do with, do with beer. beer. Oh, never, oh, never mind. mind. There's, a, There's pony. a pony. Then I thought, what would happen if I take this geometry of the claw opener and spin it round itself horizontally? I had a little play in Fusion 360 and found that there were two kind of solutions to this. But one way was discounted as, while interesting, it looked a bit flimsy for casting. So this other way might be doable. So I 3D printed one of these, and here it is. And it's pretty good at opening beers. So if this is going to be my opener, how do I incorporate this into a sculpture? To me it looks a bit like an octopus mouth or sucker, and this got me thinking. What if I sculpted an octopus and had this opener part where its mouth should be? That would be really cool, and it will be really exciting to do because it will introduce me to lots of new techniques. Well that was a month ago, and now I'm thinking it's less cool, because now I've only got six days to finish it. To incorporate the mouth part inside the body of the octopus, it means it's going to be pretty big. Here I'm trying out the various sizes. Now there is a minimum size it can be, any smaller than this, and it starts to fail as a bottle opener. In fact, the bigger the better, but there has to be a limit to the size of octopus I can make. So here I'm playing with some monster clay to make the octopus. I've had this hanging around the house for a couple of years now. This thing is massive, too massive, so I need a slightly smaller mouth part. And I try again. Back to sculpting. Okay, it's still big, but it's as small as I can make it.
How is this clay model of an octopus going to become a metal octopus, I hear you ask? Damn good question. I have no idea. Well, I have a little idea, but I've never done anything like this before, so it's more of an educated guess. Here's what I think I need to do to get a metal octopus at the end. Sculpt the octopus with the mouth part. Make a silicon mould of that. Make a wax version of the octopus with the silicon mould. Add gates, sprues, feeders and vents to the wax octopus. Make a plaster mould around the wax octopus. Fire this plaster mould so that the wax burns out okay. Melt some bronze and pour it in. I've done that bit before. Break open the mould to find a perfect octopus. Finish and tidy up the octopus. Open a beer with the octopus. Okay, so ten easy parts. Good job I'm only halfway through part one. And I've only done two of these things before. So this is going to be a massive learning experience. But that's what life's about. Let's do it. Here I'm finishing off the body of the octopus and making the legs look a bit more lifelike. I've made a little thing to make suckers. Or at least little balls for suckers. For that leg that rises up. So that's the sculpting done. Now we have to make the silicon mould. I need to go and look at YouTube and do some research. Okay, that was awesome. I've just watched the brilliant YouTubing sculptor extraordinaire, The Dark Power, link in description, make a mould of a zombie head well over 10 times. And I'm basically going to try and copy his process. So I've realised I have a limited amount of rubber, so I'm going to try and cast the mould in one part. This is a waterproof MDF sheet that I normally paint on, but it's a perfect size for this. I'm going to try and fill the mouth part with rubber too, and put that underneath the octopus just before I put the wax in. It's a bit confusing, especially to me, but I hope it'll make sense later, and more importantly work. I've made several of these mouth parts just in case one or two turn out badly. I'm going to use the top of a paint bucket for the mould wall as it's just the right size. I'd like to get to this 7.5cm mark if I can, but it's going to be very close. Right, I try and stick the octopus down. I do a quick touch up job on the eyes to make them a bit better. I make some key markings in the mould, just in case I need to make a second part. But I really hope I don't have to, as I don't have enough rubber for the first part. I hot glue the bucket wall to the MDF sheet. Here's the rubber I'm going to use. It also has a catalyst that you mix in, and then you have 100 minutes working time. And it takes 24 hours or so to cure. Now I wasn't ready for this, it is very, very sticky and horrid to remove from your hands. If someone could let me know in the comments how to clean this stuff off your hands, I'd be very grateful. Ooh, I've just realised I'm going to get to use my ancient, amazing World War II vacuum chamber. This thing is amazing. I bought it nine months ago for less than £100 on eBay and it can pump to near absolute vacuum. Right, I mix up the rubber and catalyst and pop it in the vacuum chamber to try and remove all the air bubbles from it. Once the vacuum gets quite high, you can see the tiny air bubbles expand. They then coalesce into bigger ones that rise up to the surface and pop. The dark power called it demonic looking and he's not wrong. Okay, it's basically at low earth orbit vacuum now, so I think that's enough. While that's settling, I give the octopus and mouth part moulds a quick spray with release agent. And then pour in the rubber. I'm trying to get it up inside that bit under the back of the head. Right, now I've got to wait 24 hours. Oh god, I hope it works. God. 
this is very nerve wracking. So, it has been about 36 hours. Late last night I did pull out one of these and it looks pretty good. My dog is shedding hairs at the moment so everything's getting covered in hairs. Right, let's do it. Ah, oh, there we go. Ooh, now that looks nice. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I like it. Well, that worked well. Let's have a look at the big, the big boy. Oh. Okay, great. Oh, on the key, you can see my fingerprint. So obviously it's good stuff. And it went under the head, whichever way the, this looks like the back of the head here. It really does look like it's filled every single little bit of everything. So I'm hoping, now how do I incorporate this into there? That is my only worry now. Where is the, can you see in there? There are the little divots. How do I get this? into there but making sure that gets filled. I could pour wax over that and then put it in at the end. Maybe that might work. Another nice one. I think any of these three would be good. Well I think these two are the best ones because there's no um, where this little cone, cone section was put in uh, later. You can see a, a little join there. Got the resolution on this. Um, it picks up every tiny imperfection. It's incredible. Right, I'm gonna cover this up because it's, it's getting mucky as anything now. Hmm, I wonder if it's gonna float. Do you know what? I'll try something. This is a little an experiment. Let that harden. Taken it out of the fridge, it's been in there for about 10, 15 minutes. Hoping it'll Oh yeah, it has shrunk a little. All right. If we can't get this out, then uh, we've got problems because I'm kind of have to take it out the real thing. There we go. There we go. Look at that. You can see the texture inside, like some sort of alien thing. I don't think it was hot enough. Which one? This one? Yeah. Thank you. See, it's gone hard. It's oh. not pouring in anymore. Ready for the old over overspill. Obvious, really. Hello. <laughs> what? Well, I'm going to let it harden and see what happens. That was a big 
screw up. I think I'll do it the other way next time. Okay. <laughs> the crazy um, striations where the you know where I was a little bit slow in pouring. That's ready. We'll pop it on where I think it needs to go. Now I need a bit of clear bronze all the way around it for strength. I'm going to hope it'll find its own level. If it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Here goes. Wow! I'm going to let that completely cool. I'm not going to touch that until it's rock hard. I don't think that could have gone any better. Where was his little hand? I was worried about there. Fingers crossed his hand worked. Okay. That looks great. You can see his little hand. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, nice. It's been five minutes since I mixed this. It's got ten, I've got ten minutes until it's set. And I've just degassed it. Side. <laughs> Try and get it behind that sprue. Right. So that can set there. That's all I have. Because I've been so busy with other things, I've just not checked for the right amount. So this could be a problem. Um, but as it's Friday, I'm going away on Sunday. So I've only got today and tomorrow, really. Well, I have only got today and tomorrow. Okay, let me cut in here and explain. I'm not 100% sure I have enough investment plaster and there's no chance to get any more before I leave on holiday. I've just checked, what a numpty. So to carry on and not potentially ruin my nice octopus, the Mark II, I'm gonna go ahead with my octopus Mark I, the weird looking one. I actually quite like its weird flaws. And in order to hurry the video along, I'll carry on with the voiceover for a bit. I'm tidy up his bottom, it's a hell of a mess. I removed that rubber mouthpiece and luckily the mouth looks great under it. I attach the ingate and sprue to the head. And then I add a thin vent to each arm, a uh, leg, arm, limb. and one to the centre mouth peg. I need a way to suspend the octopus in the investment plaster while it sets, so I add some feet to it so it can support itself. I think the pros usually dangle it from the vents, but mine are so flimsy. Whoopsie. I'll need to block these vents before I pour any bronze into it. 
Here I'm adding that huge feeder to the head. I've made a sacrificial bulge on his head at the join, just in case of shrinkage. I've put some little struts on because it kept moving. It's just such a soft join there. Okay, time to pour in the investment. As I'm a bit wide, I don't have enough. In the mould, I bank up the corners and anywhere there isn't wax with monster clay to make the investment go further. Okay. Now my awesome Second World War era military vacuum chamber. Hey bay, whoop whoop. It boils away any bubbles in the mix. First I put some in the little mouth area and then pour over the rest carefully. Perfect. And then when my back is turned, the whole thing rises from the deep like a true sea monster. After I notice, and a little panic, I luckily find a small box of bolts that can wear it down while not destroying my rubbish fence system. After 36 hours, it's time to take the mould out. All these bits sticking out can be snipped off. So the monster clay comes away beautifully in one piece. Hooray! There we go. That's better. Oh, that works a lot better. Right, time to fire the mould at a high temperature to remove any moisture. I don't have a kiln at the moment. I am looking on eBay. So the nearest thing I have is a very awesome pizza oven. And I'm going to grill the octopus on that side. You guys haven't seen down here before. This is down the end of our garden. We love it down here. There's, there's Nikki. There's Molly. There's my little pond. Just there. I'll show you, just there is the owl box that it's just got pigeons in it. Got damn pigeons. Quick look at the pond. It's very overgrown. So when I do the um when I do the digger, I'm gonna make a little digger. One of the main objectives is for it to be able to reach, probably with an extension arm, reach kind of halfway across and clear out this. See that horrible weed down the end? That's very invasive. Anyway, back to the uh, furnace. Not furnace, back to the barbecue. Say hi. Hi. Say hi, Molly. Oh, it's going a bit better now. Excuse the shaky footage. It's iPhone time. So I've just put the mould in. It's on a couple of bricks and the the bricks are not on the vent holes, so hopefully the wax will pour out okay. I'm in a mad rush now, so I'm just going to leave it and shut it and hope the best. I'm measuring the temperature on that far wall, that ceramic wall there, and it's 100 degrees at the moment. It will get very hot. This is a crazy hot um, barbecue stroke pizza oven, so we might be okay. I don't know about all this smoke and soot though. Also, I really hope that thing doesn't crack with the flames, but you know, what can I do? Okay, it's an hour, over an hour later, and we are at 375 degrees centigrade. I've not opened it. Oh, I'm slightly worried it's going to have exploded. If it has, so be it. Oh, I made a little popping noise there. Okay, here goes. Oh, it's in one piece. It's been an hour and a half since my last. Basically, it's at 460 degrees, which is awesome. I mean, I, short of having a kiln, there's, I couldn't ask for any better, so hopefully the soot won't be a problem. But anyway, right, back in another hour. Okay, now's the moment of truth. Um, I'm gonna light the furnace. Once the bronze is up to a nice hot temperature, I'm gonna go up to the pizza uh, oven, up by the pond, in the, down the bottom of the garden. I'm going to bring back the hot mould, the investment. I don't know how hot it will be now, but it's all I can do. I can't do it any hotter. Um, I don't know if to blow it out or not. I, I, I might blow it out. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to bring it back here. I'm going to put it on some sand. We'll just see how it goes. <laughs> That's it. All right. I use a few bits of rag.
I'm going to put a sand um, thing on top uh, to cover up all the vent holes uh, it, and just have a sprue that goes to that and a feeder that goes to that um, and basically it's 13 centimeters between those two spots so I'm going to go and make that up now Okay, it's time. It says three, two, five. Uh, I've got the feeder, feeder, sprue. So I need to have it in a certain way in the workshop. I'll pop it in the back of the truck. I can't do this on my own, so I'm gonna put the camera down. Okay, it's in. Let's do it. All right, we're back at the workshop. I've just gotta put it. Okay, fingers crossed. Very full, I have no idea how much I'm going to need. goes it could all just pour out everywhere in which case whatever it's coming up the feeder hasn't leaked yet oh Okay. I forgot to weigh it down. It's come out. Hopefully, I can pour more in. Well, that's all the bronze gone. Okay. Ooh, might be okay. Wow, a lot of bronze came out the side. Ooh, it is done. That's where it all poured out. Oh, okay. 
Oh no! I don't know what that means. Oh! I don't know what that means. Oh, it could be rubbish. Damn it! Oh dear. Oh. Well, hopefully. Oh no. I think we had a massive leak. In sand, in sand. Where did that come out? One of the little feet burst. Oh, I'm an idiot. I should have put some loose sand around the feet. I'm an idiot. Well, not a lot I can do about it now. Look in there. I should have filled that big gap with sand. Uh, I've just never done anything like this before. and I, I, I don't know, it's easy to see it now in retrospect. Look at all that there. So tired. I think this is a disaster. Let's have a look, then I can go on my holiday and that will be that. Next time, when I do it properly, I need to put it in loose sand and bank it, bank it up. I, that was my plan, like a couple of days ago to do that. I don't know what happened. I just kind of got in a little train tracks sort of plan and not to deviate. Anyway, let's have a look. This could be a completely empty uh, bottom half of a octopus. Right. Eventually froze, but that's a lot of bronze right there. I don't know if there's enough left to actually make an octopus. Oh, look, there's bronze up to the vents, which is what I, this is what I wanted. I want the vents to kind of vent a little bit of bronze in that one. Let's get over with. Oh, I can't even see. Right, well there's a leg. I can see a leg. I can see another, oh no. Okay, one of the limbs is too short. Oh, his little hand, that's uh, been cast. Oh, I can see something circular. <gasps> right there, the whole thing's upside down. <gasps> it might be all right. I know one of the limbs is short. <gasps> Let's stick it in the sword.
It's all about that mouth. Hang on a minute. It's got all it's got all its legs, they're not short. Oh Okay, now we're getting to the uh Oh, can you see there? Please. Well, this will be, I mean, I'm already, I am blown away. I was coming out here to commiserate and say, <sighs> never mind, next time. It might, might have worked. I mean, the, the octopus has worked, but it's about the opener. Right, I'm gonna spray it with the hose outside. Look at that. So, it's sort of got that alien texture. It's not been uh, perfectly rendered. I think there are some bubble marks on it. But if I get rid of that little nub, I might be able to open a bottle of beer. All right, I'm gonna go cut the bits off. Okay, as I don't have a lot of time, I decided to tidy them up right now. I cut the in-gate vents and giant feeder off very carefully. And there isn't any shrinkage that I can see, which is amazing. I need to grind that back to that witness mark and see if it'll open a beer. <laughs> now it's time to grind and sand off any sharp bits very, very carefully. A little bit of filing and sanding to tidy it up. Now I need to remove that last little thing stopping me opening a beer, I hope, that little nub. Right, I just need to grind away the sharp bit. Right. Time to go in. Woo. I'm gonna go back and get a beer. Woo. I love the little, you know, those little kind of layer lines. And I love his little head. I can grab it by the eyes. Click, come on, let's get a beer. I have two lovely cold beers. <sighs> okay, oops. One turns it upside down. on. Oh, you little beauty. He is the coolest thing I've ever made. 
Wow. Brilliant. I love him. Cheers. Oh, I can go away on my holiday now. I've been stressing so much. I can't believe it. Do you know what? I swear I thought that was absolutely ruined, that um, when that bronze whatever it went everywhere. <sighs> oh, look at his little hand. And then the, the business end. Oh. So the idea was to have him touching a beer. Let's do that. There he is, touching a beer. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe too. That would be awesome. Right, I'm off on Holly Bobs. Whoop whoop. <laughs>